Hey guys, welcome to another tour of my game room and of some other rooms in this house where I have video game stuff. I do these tours from time to time just to show you all the crap I have bought over the years. This time around, I'm going to show more than I've ever shown before. This is just all for your enjoyment. I'm not suggesting that anyone buy all this stuff like I did and I'm not trying to show off. I'm just sharing what I have with you and I think you'll find it very interesting. I'm gonna start on this side of the main room and what I have going on over here is a bunch of older game systems hooked up to an older TV. For the most part, these systems were meant to be played on a CRT TV with a 4-3 aspect ratio. That's why I have all these grouped over here. Here on the left, we start off with the 3DO, the Sega Saturn, and the Super Nintendo. Underneath that, we have the PS1, the Sega Genesis with the Sega CD attached to it, the N64, the Game Wave, the Bally Astrocade, and on the left there we have the oldest system in this room, the original Odyssey. We have the Video Art system and the Atari 7800. Now you may have noticed that at the top of the shelves there are power switches. There's one for each console. Each console also has its own number so that I know which one I'm turning on. The 6A and 6B represent the Sega Genesis and the Sega CD. There's times when they both need to be on. Every electronic device on these racks in this room have a power button, even the TVs. The plugs to the systems are plugged into the back of those switches, and we can kind of see that through the chrome shelving right there. The wires that go down from the top go through these raceway covers to help conceal them a little bit. This is what they look like when they're not on the setup. I painted them red to match the walls just so it can hide the wires a little bit. And you can see the little grooves on the side. All the wires go to different areas of the setup. So that's why I wanted to cover with these notches. Wherever the wire needs to come out, it can come out through those notches. I don't have every wire hidden in the setup, just the parts near the top where they're all clustered together. Also, a lot of the game systems that have wired controllers, I have trays for. I bought these specifically for tucking in controller cords so they don't get all over the place. All of these controllers can reach the center of the room where it can play the system from and to get that to happen most of these controllers have extensions on them and they are tucked into the trays as I show you here. The next column over I have the Atari Jaguar and the CD unit that goes on top of it. I have a Zavix port there and a Dreamcast and a GoGo -Go TV. Down below the CRT TV are some other game systems kind of tucked away in these shelves. The the first two are VCR based game systems. The first one is the Action Max and the other one is the Viewmaster Interactive Vision. Then there's the Fairchild Channel F and the Intellivision. By the way, I do have a VCR in the setup for these systems and it's at the top of the shelf. The TV is a JVC. I think it's a 36 inch. I always forget. And it's pretty big and heavy. You may have noticed on top of the TV, I have these very s strange switch boxes. With these in the setup, I can pretty much play any of these game systems on a moment's notice. I punch little buttons on the switch boxes and it routes the signal to the TV from whatever game system I'm trying to play. The numbering system is kind of complex. This switch box here, I'm redoing the labeling and I haven't finished that yet. There's also switch boxes in between some of the systems and some cases to play a certain game system I have to hit one button on one switch box and another button on another. It's pretty much a network so there's a lot of cords running through the back of this setup. In the third column here we have Apple Pippin, a Hyperscan, and a 32X. Those three systems sit on top of a special tray that I made myself. Eventually I plan on replacing every black tray in this room with this new type, though I won't be painting it white like this. Below that we had the CDI and the NES, the Atari XEGS, the Turbo Graphics and the Turbo CD, the Atari 2600, the Buzz Time, ColecoVision, and along the bottom we have the Atari 7800 and the Odyssey 2. 
moments ago, I was talking about how there's a network. The older systems that have RF that comes out the back cannot be networked very well in that way without losing signal. So instead I have a plug and play setup here. Whenever I wanna play one of these really old systems like the Odyssey 2, I find its number and the cord that corresponds to its number and I plug it into this connector here that says TV. And then I turn the channel to channel three and that's how I play those systems. It's hard to explain, but it works really easily. Now let's talk about this side of the room. For the most part, these systems are newer than the other ones. The exception would be in the bottom left corner here. We have a new one enhanced DVD player, a GameCube. Then we have the Master System, the Oh Yeah, the PS2. Beneath that we have a Neo Geo, a PlayStation TV, an Xbox 360. In case you're wondering, the PS2 does have a weight on top of it. That's because the door sensors are starting to get bad. That's a common issue for the PS2 Slim edition. To make the sensors better, you can put something on top of the lid to weigh it down a little bit. And down below we have four old systems. Two of these are routed to the CRT TV. Another two I haven't fully hooked up yet. But we have the Arcadia 2001, the Odyssey 200, this is the actual first game system I ever had. It was in my household when I was growing up and it's a Pong system and it's the only Pong system I have in this room. I'm not gonna collect all the different Pong systems, but this one has sentimental value to me. There's also a Studio 2 and a Coleco TriStar Arcade. Over top of the TV, we have the original Xbox, the Wii and the Wii U. And I'll just give you another look at the switches that are above those systems. There's a lot of devices. The LTS means lights. I used to have strands of lights on this setup, but I took them all down. I made a video as to why I did that, and I'll put a link in the description to it. Beneath the TV, I have a PS4 and a PS5, and I also have the PSVR, the older one. And right underneath the TV, I have all kinds of equipment. For one thing, I have this HDMI switch box. This is basically a switcher that can coordinate 16 different systems from their HDMI cords and route them to the TV. I have more than 16 though, so I have another HDMI box, a Kinevo, that only holds five inputs. I also have a RetroTINK 5X, which helps convert footage so that I can record it. I should say the main purpose of this room is to be able to play any of these systems real quickly and on the spot. But I also use this room to work in, and for that purpose, I need to be able to capture footage so that I can make game related content for my YouTube channels. I also have this HDMI splitter and this has a specific purpose. I use it to record footage from the PS3 and from the PlayStation TV because those two systems encrypt the signal and this splitter unencrypts it kind of accidentally. So and the capture device I use is an Elgato HD60S in the next column of shelving, I have an Xbox Series X, an Xbox One X, a Nintendo Switch, an Evercade Versus, and a PS3. I have a Retron 77 and a Retron 5. The bottom two shelves consist of the mini systems. I have a PS1, Neo Geo Mini, the NES and SNES Mini, the Genesis Mini, TurboGrafx-16 Mini, and the Commodore 64 Mini. I also have the Genesis Model 2 Mini, but it's set aside for now. I have not added it to the setup. Here's another thing to point out. I have art along the walls. It's all encased in a black frame. There's a Metal Gear Solid poster. Then there's that castle scene from Ninja Gaiden on the NES. Contra 3, Super Nintendo box art, basically. A Sonic the Hedgehog poster. Super Ghouls and Ghost box art. Final Fantasy box art. That's a collage of all the Mortal Kombat characters from the second game. I got Mega Man, Shinmu, Super Mario Galaxy, and some others. So let's take a look at this wall. I have a lot going on here, so let me explain. 
I have box art of the first three Castlevania games on the NES. These are the handheld game systems that I own. Game Boy, a Microvision, a Supervision, a Turbo Express. Then we have a Gamecom, a Game Gear, a Lynx, a Gizmodo, a DSi, a Game Boy Advance, a Game Boy Color, the original Game Boy Advance, a PSP, a Neo Geo Pocket, a DS, the 3DS, a Vita, an N-Gage, and a Wonder Swan. Below that, I have my Vetrix and Virtual Boy games. These are pretty much the only games that I actually store in this room. I'll be getting to the other room in a little bit, and I'll show you my game collection. I just want these to be close by the Vetrix and Virtual Boy, which is what you have on the table next to it. And above that is the window, which is covered by a single curtain and then an Atari banner. Now, let me show you the floor. I wanted to be a little bit more raw in this tour and just show you what it honestly looks like and even though I cleaned things up a little bit there's still a mess it's hard to explain what I have going on here but I want to have electricity so I can play the virtual boy or the vetrex over here along the wall but I also have cords coming out of that outlet that lead to my PC which you'll see in a second and underneath my Streets of Rage poster are the overlays for the Vetrex. These add color to the various games. And these are held on by magnets. And now we're gonna get to the PC area. I've never showed this before on my channel. I mainly use this to edit videos and I used to do it in another room, but I since moved everything in here because I wanted to be close to the action. I'm actually using the computer right now as I make this video. I don't do any PC gaming unless it's like some emulator stuff. That desk is a combination of things that I bought from Ikea. It's the drawer set, a countertop and two tables legs. There's a Zelda pencil holder there. The computer I built probably two years ago and here's the specs if you're wondering. And I have a lot of makeshift sound insulation because this is basically sitting inside a closet. There was a lot of echo coming from that closet originally so I had this old comforter that I was going to throw away but I decided to nail it to the wall and just give myself um, some sound insulation. I also have sound tiles to absorb some of the sound. Some of them are mounted on this piece of cardboard that I can move around if I'm talking in one specific area of the room, I can kind of dampen it by moving that cardboard around. This desk is meant to be slid because sometimes I want to face the camera and have it between me and the closet. The computer itself can also be slid because it has wheels underneath it. The frame that I bought for it is a little bit too big so if I scoot it, I have to be very careful that it doesn't fall through the little cart there. But why do I have the computer on wheels? It's because I need to capture video from the setup and that computer tower needs to be a little bit closer for the cord to reach. So that gives me the flexibility when I'm capturing footage from the PS3 or whatever, I have to stretch the USB cord all the way to the computer, if that makes sense. Next to that desk is another mess. Like I said, I wanted this to be raw. On the floor is a bunch of more wires. This is basically a charging area. I have to charge controllers. I have to charge my camera. I have to charge the light that goes on top of the camera. Um, you also see the microphone sitting back there. In the future, I'm going to build a charging station. It's gonna be super organized. The wall itself doesn't have much going on. I'm not sure how it got damaged. And then there's the door, which has a blaster master poster on it and beside it I have a light switch with a Game Boy cover on it. I got that from Etsy I believe. When I'm gaming in here I sit in this chair and I love this chair. Much like the desk it can be slid because I added some of those furniture sliders underneath it because sometimes I need to face one wall to play a system and other days I need to face another wall. I also need to sometimes move it out of the way so that I can film stuff. It has a side pocket for remote control for all the equipment, including the two TVs, and it also reclines. Unfortunately, I have cats and they have taken a liking to this chair and they're slowly uh, disintegrating the back of it. I've kind of been slow to react to that. I want to put some plastic 
on the corners so they can't do it uh, but I just haven't gotten around to it there's usually these two lights in this room and as you can see they're very bright and I'm using them today to light up the setup for you and I often have a uh, tripod there for my camera so yeah it is a video game room but it's also a studio and I just kind of combine all those things together I installed carpet tiles gray ones obviously and the cats have damaged this one piece that's next to the door because they sometimes want out and I'm in the middle of a game and they start clawing by the door. But luckily I have a supply of spare carpet tiles and as I'm making this video I'm cutting a piece of it and I'm repairing it. And this time I glued it down so hopefully they won't be able to scrape that up but we'll see. Now we're gonna move across the hallway to the other room. This is where I hold all my games, except for the Vetrix and Virtual Boy ones. I buy a little bit of everything since I have a lot of different game consoles. I also store boxes in this room. They take up a lot of space and I don't do too much with them in terms of displaying them. So this is more of a storage area. I may someday get a shelf to display them all on, but it'll have to be a big shelf. I figure if I ever sell these systems and their accessories, I'll get more if I have the original box. But right here, I'm just uh, pulling things out so you can see what I have. I have the original Odyssey game box from the early 70s. I have an Action Max, I have the Oya oh yeah box, the PS Vita, the Engage, the Zavix port. I even have the GameCube component controls and a whole bunch of other stuff. Underneath all that, I have random storage of mostly video game related stuff just put away in these boxes. And I have more storage in this corner. I have some repair equipment like a soldering iron in there as well. I have things in drawers in this room. This first drawer, I have some Genesis controllers and some other stuff. And the bottom drawer is just more controllers from various systems. Then another set of drawers is over here. It's kind of messy. I have some Vetrex manuals there. I have Microvision games in there. I have the label maker. I have a bunch of receipts that showed the price I paid for some of the games that are in my collection in some of the game systems. The second drawer here, I have mostly camera equipment and I have more manuals the third drawer I have more manuals These little silica packets that I get sometimes when I buy something, I toss them in these drawers just to make sure there's no moisture damage to these manuals. Also in this room is a spare chair. I also have a movable laptop pedestal. I used to roll this into the game room and capture footage using this laptop, but I learned over time that the PC that I created is much better capable at handling the capturing of that footage. I also have these red ottomans that are worn out and they are stacked. They have storage inside, but I mainly use these for the How To X channel that I have, which is a How To channel. A lot of times I'm performing intricate repair work. I move this stack of ottomans in there and put a blue cloth over it and that way I can work on something and along with that I have this tray that also moves and it has my repair equipment in it including my multimeter and my screws and all kinds of stuff that I use to work on electronic equipment. Behind the video game shelving is a storage area and I'm going to take you back behind there. As I step in here I got some uh, poster frames against the wall and I have some of my old posters that I took down 
down a while back and back in this dead end, I have stacks of more stuff. The majority of that stuff is the individual game boxes. Like if I have an Atari game that came in a box, I have it stored in there. I have this box of controllers that I've stripped apart for parts. My cats are curious about what I'm doing back here. There's also a closet back here and I have more video game stuff in the closet. Small amount of my Game Boy Advance games back here and Game Gear games and stuff like that. I have a magazine collection, mostly Electronic Gaming Monthly. I have more boxes back here and I have a spare TV in case the other one ever conks out. And I also have more magazines along the bottom of there. Now I'm going to take you into my bedroom. <laughs> I've never said that on YouTube before. I'm not gonna give you a whole tour of every wall, but I am gonna show you a few things I have stored in here. Along the top shelf of my closet is the rest of my magazine collection. I have a complete set of Electronic Gaming Monthly. I have Game Pro. I made a video where I showed the entire collection up close. If you're interested in that, I'll put a link in the description. I also have another set of drawers, and all of these are for video game storage. I have accessories, I have extra handheld game systems, I have more manuals. And you can never have enough Genesis's. There's an Atari 2600. In this last drawer, I have some of the pieces that go to my Odyssey game system. It was kind of like a board game system in some ways. And so some of the games had like chips and money and, and cards and stuff like that. So this is where I keep that. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this tour. I have other similar tours I've done over the years off to the side here. So have a look at those if you haven't already. May your games make you happy and smart and may people respect you for playing them. So long, everybody.